All right, buongiorno a tutti. Ciao, it is Sam from A Perry Life. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about some things that I think a lot of people are curious about when it comes to being in Italy, living in Italy. I am going to share some personal experiences, but I'm gonna do like a general realization of the pros and the cons of living in Italy. Just so you all know, I am a black American. I don't have any Caribbean background. Um, I don't have any connections in Italy outside of my fiance. And I am a flight attendant who's based in the States. So I make my money in the States. So all of my experiences and my backgrounds will come, my, my experience in the back, the experience that I would tell you all will come from, what I interpret life as and the things I have experienced as a black American. Um, and those two things do, I think they do change a big portion of the experience that I've had in Italy as a woman of color and as a person of color and as, um, considering what my nationality is, it has really changed my experience while living in Italy. Um, so I'm going to give you guys some pros and cons. I recently saw a video on YouTube where this guy talked about the pros and cons of living in Dubai. And I thought it was really interesting. I actually really enjoyed it. And, um, he listed five of each. So I did write down five different pros and cons of what it's like living in Italy. And I am going to try not to edit this video. I think I'm just going to just upload it. Um, I realized when I, do edit it i do kind of slow down the process of uploading it so if somebody wants to put the time stamps down below feel free to do so but i'm going to share the pros first and then the cons and um once again this is my black american experience as a person who also um lives and works in the states um and i live in the states part-time so i do half italy half um the usa so please keep that in mind also, just so I can also just thinking of this. Also, I live my life in Italy, how an Italian would live their life. A lot of people do move to Italy and they live their life like Americans. So I have a lot of friends that are Americans that live in Italy and they live their lives like Americans in a different country. So I do actually live my life as a Italian. So keep that in mind. I am fully engulfed in an Italian like family aspect, not like an Italian, like a person who goes to work on a regular basis and does all the hustling, and the bustling, but a person who is in an Italian family and with drama and with, you know, finances and deaths and all of this, like I'm involved in that versus what my friends who live in Italy, they actually live like, like they might eat Italian food and things of that sort, but they live a very American-esque lifestyle. And there's a lot of things that they're not familiar with that I am because I do have my partner and his family that I do all of my things with. So with that being said, here are the pros of living in Italy. So first thing on my list here is safety. I feel super safe in Italy, especially in comparison to the places I've been as a black woman, um, whether it be in Florida where I'm from or going to the East Coast, West Coast, wherever I am. When I, and I've been to several different countries, I've traveled a lot. I feel really safe in Italy. Um, I know that the one of the top crimes that you will experience will be like pickpocketing. Um, guns are not, allowed it, it, you don't have a gun problem if you have a gun you have a license for a gun which is typically um, I believe it's a hunting license and you're a cop that's basically it there isn't like someone who just has a pistol in their house just because you don't have any of that happening um, and typically when there is something like a homicide that happens it is a um, it's typically a family member or it's a, a, a crime of passion so it's not even common that you have it happen just randomly throughout like strangers. You know how in the States you'll like have like random people that will turn up, you know, missing or unalived or whatever like that. You don't even really have that happening as frequently as you would, I guess you would assume it would be. Um, Italians are known for being passionate and having like 
you know, being loud and boisterous and all of this stuff. And when I am in even a major city, um, my biggest fear is being pickpocketed. And that's something that when I am, and I'll get to it with the cons, but it is when people like ask me what it's like being in, in Italy, sometimes they'll talk about like the safety of it, like not safety, but they'll, they'll like, they'll ask how it is living in Italy and then they'll slowly get into one of the really big topics that is in the cons. But most of the time, like when people think of Italy, they're not thinking of someone trying to steal your organs or anything like that, or, you know, going there for uh, plastic surgery that gets botched or whatnot. Like you don't really have that stigma um, of I Italian life. If you are a student, one thing you do have to worry about um, is of course getting great and also um, the spiking of beverages. And one thing, another thing that like I do on my part time is I will go to universities and I'll talk about uh, cultural education and diversity in Italy. And um, one thing that you have to remember is that Italy is a country where all the people are white. And if you are not from here, you don't speak Italian, you won't be able to pick up what is and is not an accent when the person is speaking Italian. So you might have a person who speaks Italian, but isn't from Italy. And so you have a lot of students who will have a situation where they feel safe because they think the person is Italian. And there are bad Italians as well, but you have people who have immigrated here from a lot of different places, a lot of people who are under different circumstances, a lot of people who have bad intent, who are white. And a lot of people automatically will say like, oh, it was a town, like I had this experience with an Italian. So it is something you have to be cautious of, um, particularly with pickpocketing and with the drugging of beverages, which most of the time is something that young people deal with. Um, and not, I mean, I'm, I'm older, I'm going out with girlfriends that are, you know, I'm not going to random bars with young guys or anything of that sort. So it's not something that most people would have to deal with. So that is my number one pro safety. That's the number one pro. The next pro on my list is the affordability, how affordable Italy is. And it's affordable, of course, not to everybody. And that is something I do have to like, kind of like, like, you know, that's a disclaimer. It's not affordable to everyone, but there are a lot of, like if you are a person who is coming to Italy from a different country, it can be see seen as affordable. It's kind of like leaving New York and moving to like the Midwest and you realize that like, or moving to like Det maybe just Detroit or something like that. And you realize that, hey, what you got in New York for like 2,200 a month, in Detroit, 2,200 gets you like something 10 times better and it's new. That's kind of how it is in in Italy. Um, if you are here for an extended amount of time and you are operating here like how Italians do, you will face consequences. And I'll talk about that in the cons. But for the most part, most people, when they do come here and something that makes a person want to move to Italy is because it's affordable. So, you know, you might find a house in the center that is much cheaper than what you would find back home and it's nicer and it's near the Duomo and, you know, nightlife and all of that stuff. And this also has been a big part of the housing crisis in Italy because so many people are Airbnb and booking out their, like using booking and all the other stuff to like rent out their places instead of renting it to Italians. So Italians have had to like commute much further or they're having a problem finding local housing that is affordable for Italians. But once again, I'm talking about black Americans or just Americans. Um, coming here with money that they've saved in the States to have in Italy. You will find it as affordable, as an affordable place, um, depending on how long you're gonna be here. You might, you know, you might budget to be here for a year and a half. Um, at the prices, you will get more for, more bang for your buck here, especially considering the food is much cheaper. Um, you will, even eating out is not as much. Public transportation is much cheaper. Um, I think I pay, I think it's like 170 for a bus tram ticket in um, in Florence. And 
of course it's like two and some change in um in Florence and then there is the little like the little um tram that gets you from what's it called the air train yeah that goes from like Jamaica station to the JFK airport and it's like eight dollars and fifty cents it's expensive and then like for and that takes you like maybe like all of seven minutes and for like the 35 minute express train it's like 14 euro and it goes really far and really fast and it's like no stops so I mean just in comparison it's just so much more expensive in the states it is it's just so much more expensive so that is a big plus it being affordable um i think a lot of people when they come here and they you know they see like all the beauty and then they eat out and they have a nice dinner for like you know 60 euro for two people or like 80 euro for two people whereas if you go to the capital girl you're going to spend like almost 200 300 bucks like people are like oh yeah i can live here sign me up so that is the next thing it is affordable here in italy for some people affordable for some people <laughs> affordable for some people the next thing is that is a pro the third thing is the transportation and getting around and it's not just like the transportation like the local trains because there are a lot of cons when it comes to um the you know like some of the, the the transportation throughout the country there's always strikes um but transportation going like to and from different regions is like fantastic like if i cannot get home to florence via like one airport i have typically three or four other airports i can go into and there's a train that will get me back to florence like in a reasonable amount of my, a time and it's super convenient so let's say for like for example if i cannot take the like i say if the rome flight is full and i can go from rome um and typically i go from rome and i get on a train to florence i can go to milan i can go to venice i can catch a, a, a flight from um jfk to amsterdam amsterdam straight into florence and then take the bus home or taxi home i can literally uh, i can go to paris and do that same exact thing i can go into pisa i can go into the bologna airport i can go into like so many different options if i needed to i can technically go into naples and it's not that bad of um it's not that much maybe it's like an extra hour and a half two hours um that i would spend um commuting so it's much more reliable even with the strikes it's much more reliable it's faster it's comfortable um i feel like the trains in the states i never really 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 get comfortable in them i feel like they're just like disgusting and here in italy you feel like you feel you feel really comfortable in them and um even like the train stations which i know they have this um for like amtrak but you have like the lounges and stuff that you can go to which are really nice and really convenient um you just have so many things that like when you look on a grand on the grand scale of how much easier it is to travel throughout the country via like that sort of transportation like the across country transportation it's super convenient now just on the downside of that when you go into certain regions or certain areas i can't even say regions just certain areas public transportation is not as reliable so like in florence in milan in rome in bologna you will find like really 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 like reliable public transportation like the trains and stuff but like if you go into a smaller city like even just outside of florence is an area called impruneta which you will have uh buses that are just not as frequent and in my opinion that is a problem um but also those are almost like i don't want to say they're not villages because they're almost like a sub community of florence like they're like a neighboring community but like it's people with you know like with olive trees and vineyards and things of that sort it is more of a uh, a person with more of a garden type of area so you almost understand it like mm, it's inconvenient for them but it's also you don't have as many people out there who are coming back and forth to the center on a regular so transportation and getting around is typically pretty good like you can get to a decent place of where you need to go really fast and then from there get a pretty affordable taxi so 
that's the next thing on the list, the transportation and getting around. The fourth thing on the list for the pros is the lifestyle and the vacations. The Italian lifestyle, I will say, is a really relaxed lifestyle. It really is a enjoy the life, um, enjoy where you are. It is a dolce vita like experience for sure. Um, the vacations, even if you are, even if you don't have money, you're taking a vacation of sort. Which coming from a family where my parents took vacation and they basically stayed home and did laundry, I really appreciate like being able to like just decompress and just not just like decompress a little bit but like actually go somewhere and have like no responsibilities you feel like like it's just a great ex great feeling and even like if you let's say if you don't have a beach house or anything of that sort you still have italians who are just like like the entire city is going to shut down so you almost don't have you, the only thing that you have to do is literally to go to the sea or go to like the mountains or go like to a lake or some body of water or a cooling type of station during like the summer months. Like a vacation is almost just like mandatory. And so I really like that. On the flip side, I think it could be a much more productive time for some people um, because then you do have the entitlement of like deserving a vacation, especially for people who might have not done that much in the in the entire year but you know I can't speak for them I can only speak for myself it is good to be able to um to like say like hey let's get on let's let's get on a boat let's do this let's do that like I'm having so many experiences as a black woman that I never had before like even just growing up like my parents they couldn't, I, I'm like their wildest dream. My parents have never um, been on a private boat in, in, I mean, in any sea, but let alone, you know, like sailing the Croatian coast. My parents, you know, they haven't been invited to ski. I'm usually invited um, to go to the mountains during the winter. And I usually say, no, this year I said, I'm going to go. I said, I'm going to get me some cute winter clothes. And I said, I'm going to go. But um, it is something that Italians do appreciate. You know, like I do like the lifestyle of sitting down and having dinner with your family. There are certain things that I wish Italians did better with that, but I do like them getting together and, um, and, and taking the moment to just like kind of decompress as a family. I really, really, really enjoy that. Um, and then also I love like the whole like, you know, like going to the coffee shop and having a coffee there and not taking it to go. I love the, you know, I'm going to have my coffee no matter what. And, you know, if I come into the office late because I want to get a coffee, no one's going to be pissed off about it because it's understandable that you need a coffee. So like, I really, really, really love that. And I wish that there were certain aspects of that, that the American culture adapted and vice versa. And I haven't worked in an actual office building in, I don't want to say in years, but in a while, like the most office building thing that I've done in the last 10 years is working at a restaurant part-time. So, you know, like the whole, like just to sit in the chill type of mentality that Italians have, I really do appreciate it. So that's the fourth thing on the list, um, the lifestyle and vacation. And the last thing on the list here is the fresh food. You cannot beat the fresh food in Italy and or, I mean, a lot of, um, I would say a lot of European countries, but enough of them. And I think like a lot of people, I would just say like outside of the US actually feel this way when it comes to fresh food, where it's just like tomatoes taste like tomatoes, um, you know, like things are in season. I feel like, I feel like in the States, I never really understand what's in season because everything is always available. And I'll never forget that like when my fiance, when I asked for something that was not in season and he was like, no, like it was just like the him. It was almost like I asked him to like, hey, um, I got a flat tire. Can you lift the car up so I can change the tire? And he'd be like, no. you know, it's just like, it was just so absurd to him. Like that is the stupidest thing ever. Like, why would you ask for that? That is not the season for that. And I didn't understand that because one, I'm from Florida. So of course it's a little more tropical. We do have, you know, whatever, whatever. But like, even like the term mango season, which is really big in Florida, in South Florida, um, I never even thought about the time that it's just like, oh yeah, this is the season for mangoes. Like I never put the two of those together. And so coming here, it's like, 
understanding and getting excited about like cherry season and apple season and um you know when certain like foods are eaten more and provided more like i really 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 am appreciative of that and even just now i've got a whole bag of a food here guys let me show you guys i just left the local supermarket I literally, I gotta put it in the fridge. I literally have an entire bag of food there. I bought grapes, I bought like pre, uh, like prepared food, pre-prepared food. And if I can only eat food from Europe, I will. So what I buy in the States is very, very, very limited, like really limited. Um, and even at my house today, I mean yesterday before I left to come to Italy, I ate food that I bought in Italy like a day or two before to eat while i was in the new york in new york so that's just something i just feel like complete difference in my in my body in my digestive system in my skin like there was like a huge difference and so um and so yeah so that is that is, that is something that i think we don't realize that we don't get like you don't hear like here in the news like huge salmonella breakout huge e coli breakout don't eat the cucumbers don't eat the like you don't hear like oh like food recalled like you don't hear of that so yes fresh food is something that is a big con that i absolutely love so guys we will mark this this is like 21 minutes into the video where we will start the cons of this video and i hope it's not really too much um, it might actually be relatively fast, but there are five cons that I have here that I think are important. I don't think people talk about them enough. And I think um, the experience that I have is in the questions that I'm, I'm asked from people, I really understand it because they're asking me these questions from the perspective of I'm a American, how is this transition for me? It's not that I'm from this country or this country. And it's also like a lot of people don't keep in mind that I am in Italy because of my partner, which does help with the whole immigration process, which I do have on the list here. So keep that in mind. Um, these are things that I think that a lot of people don't think about. So the first thing on the list here is the con um, is work. Excuse me. The first con is work. Getting a job in Italy is not easy, especially from an Italian company, especially if you do not speak Italian. And that is something that a lot of people, they think like they're going to just work at a local supermarket or something like that. And they'll just like, you know, they'll just work there until they get off of their feet and get a better job. That's not how it goes here. The supermarket is considered a good, stable job. Um, working, at, you know, like maybe i don't know about places like zara or h m but like you don't see young people really working um you see people who are typically you know you can tell they're a little bit older young people are basically just studying the entire time so like jobs that we consider to be jobs that were for us as a teenager it's 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 a job for an adult it's not like a job that you just like have like this turnover type of thing. It's a job for an adult. And a lot of times you have to know someone. And so that goes into like nepotism. So you have to know somebody. You're hoping that they keep you. Uh, we had a friend who um, she got a degree in something and she was hoping to get a job in that. And then she couldn't. And then she was kind of like looking for a job in other fields and she couldn't and then um in italy uh, most of the employers have a contract most of the employees have a contract so there was a woman that was at a supermarket that went out on maternity leave so they hired our friend just to fill in for that woman who was pregnant and my the friend was hoping that um she would be kept on as a um as a full-time employee and she wasn't she was devastated it's just so hard to find work in italy and that's just like talking about big cities this friend was an italian woman in florence like her family is from florence the imagine if you're not from here most people what they end up doing is they end up getting jobs as like english teachers they try to find work um under the table which is really hard because i mean there are people who are here who i mean fit the 
the bare minimum of speaking Italian. And most Americans, they don't have that, even that foundation of speaking the language. I don't have it either. So I won't even, I won't even fool you. I don't have it either. And that is one thing when people ask me about what is it like being in Italy? I have a great life in Italy because I get money from the States. So I'm able to come here and shop at one of the more expensive supermarkets for my pre-prepared food. You know what I mean? Things of that sort. So that's the first con, work. Yeah, it, it's tough out here in the streets. <laughs> it's tough. And this actually, this ties into it with the nepotism and things of that stuff. Um, housing, housing is a con in Italy and you know, there in in this particular situation, I my partner has a house, um, and I am saving to be able to buy a house. But most people, when they plan to move to another country or they're planning to move and they are not sure where they want to move, or, you know, where and you know get their feet wet, they're going to rent. And being a person of color, you have to be prepared for the housing discrimination excuse me, that can happen here in Italy. Um, and then you also have to deal with the lack of housing and you also have to deal with um, whatever your budget was. Is it a realistic budget that you might have to change along like further down to make your money stretch? So a lot of people, what I've seen, what they do is they in the States, they have a house that is maybe they're paying like 2,500 2500 a month for their mortgage. Then they'll come here and they'll rent a place that's like 2000 a month and it's a nice place and it has a lot of space and it probably has more space than they need and it's very luxurious they have a garden they have this they have that and they're kind of living like on the high hog type of situation and then their money is not stretched as far when they really 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 should have been looking for a place that was maybe like 1500 or 1700 that is something that is much more realistic and doable so housing the lack of of uh, the education when it comes to housing of, of of having your american dollars or your whatever dollars stretch and then also dealing with having to find housing in an area where the people like it's hard like squatters i want to say it's common but the typical leasing here in italy um is a four by four they call it which means that you have basically an eight-year lease uh, having like a one-year lease isn't something that is so common and there's a lot of places that are actually airbnbs which is a big problem here in italy and so you um you end up finding yourself in a space where uh, you're gonna pay absorbent prices because the place that you want to live in is an airbnb and they know that they can get you out of there and re-rent it for an expensive amount or you're gonna have a situation of um, really not being able to find a place in general, or you might have to go really far out where you might get a place that has a lot of garden and things of that sort, but a lot of garden and stuff typically will mean that you're out of the way when it comes to the public transportation that I was talking about earlier. So if you're going to have a place that has a lot of greenery, you're going to be in a place that doesn't have good transportation. And if you are a person who wants to be here and live here as uh, you know, to experience the Italian lifestyle, you want to be closer. So you're kind of damned if you, damned if you don't type of situation. And if you're out there in the boonies, then you're probably not going to enjoy it as much because of the fact that it is a really, 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 really small town. And depending on where you are, they might not be as either friendly or I think Italians are friendly, but you're going to find it to be more curious and it's going to be a different experience and like a lot of black people from what i've seen is like when they come here especially when you know like you look nice you you don't look like you're struggling or whatever whatever italians are curious they're really big on staring and so that spectacle that ends up happening with who you are just like as a person as in your identity as like not your job or anything but just like who you are i am a black woman that is just like something that will never change me my occupation is flight attendant but i am this um it, it can become overwhelming and where you're living if you're living in a place that is much 
more heavily populated they probably are going to see more people of color which means that you won't be as big as a shock big of a shock to the locals so anyway that's the housing situation um i'm sorry that kind of went off the whatever but yeah the next thing and um i think i'm going to switch this up because i think my last thing is going to be the most dramatic one um but okay the next thing is going to be the transition on um, the tradition and how tradition can be seen as a con in Italy. Um, and it's not tradition in the sense of a cultural thing. Like it's tradition to eat dinner together. It's tradition to have Pasqua together. Not like that. Tradition as in things that ch that have existed that Italians don't change. And it's almost just seen just like that's just how it is. You know, like there's certain things that you're just like, that's just how it is. There are certain things in Italy that could be much better that it's like, that's just how it is. So that is talking about bureaucracy. Um, the Italian bureaucracy is dehumanizing at times. Um, you go to get your residency and your visa situation. Um, you, you go to get that. Oh my gosh, actually, I, I just, I skipped one actually, because visa was the next one. Um, but we'll go back to it. You go to get um, any of the paperwork. It's it's a hot mess. You um, tradition of everything closing at a certain time, like no one being staffed. Um, that is a con. I know that like people are like, oh yeah, it's funny Italians. Yeah, they all stop and have coffee and lunch and the place closes. It is it, it, it is bad. It is an inconvenience. And what happens when the only time that I have off is the time that the bank, like it, the bank is closed too. Or when there's something that's serious that you need to do and you can't do it because this particular place is closed. Um, so that is something that is like, it, it's, it's kind of tradition in the sense of it's in Italian, um, like it's embedded into like the culture, but it's something that is, is horrible and it really needs to be changed. Along with that, with that tradition and the bureaucratic stuff also comes the, tr the strikes, which I just mentioned. Um, I mentioned that like kind of like a little bit in the transportation part of the pro. The strikes in Italy are like no joke, especially if you're in a major town, that's where you will feel it the most. Um, I don't know how it is like if you're in a little town and you don't have reliable transportation and you nine times out of 10 have an alternative of how to get somewhere, it's not a big thing. But if you're in a small, you're in a big town like Milano or Florence and you need to take the tram or the buses, um, it is a ridiculous inconvenience because everything will stop and you have to figure something out and even like it's not even just like happening like within the towns there's different types of strikes so you have a baggage handler strikes so that's where the people who take the luggage on and off the plane will strike random as heck right you will have the um of course airport strikes of like employees you will also have um public transportation strikes so that affects the transportation within the city you also will have regional tra uh, regional train strikes which affects trains that are going throughout the region you also will have strikes of trains that are traveling throughout the country um you will have air traffic control strikes you will have taxi strikes like it is just like crazy so um it is something that, like I said, it goes back into like the bureaucracy in the traditions in the Italian culture that are just like there that are not changing. And it kind of holds the country back from being even greater than what I think it could be. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm pro union, so I'm all for strikes and things of that sort. But there's just like certain things that it still is a con. You know what I mean? Like it's a con like when you have to like I don't fly into Milano on Fridays as a passenger. I will go to Rome before I go to Milan because I've been struck. I've been stuck at the airport for hours because there was a strike. I've had way too many times. So like now I am very much so I keep up with the strikes. I actually I posted on my Instagram. I share the information about strikes on my Instagram. 
um, because it's horrible and you're just in a situation that you have nothing, you have not, like when the trains are striking, it's horrible because they strike. And then, um, which actually is crazy because the train will strike tomorrow and it will affect the train at the airport. And so what will happen is that they will strike and then sometime the taxi drivers at the airport in solidarity with the train driver, the train um, conductors and employees, they will also be striking. So you'll just be stuck. You're just stuck. So that is the one thing that is really, really, really crazy. That was the third thing. The fourth thing is visas. Um, a lot of Americans don't think about how they're actually, and I'm only speaking for Americans, how they're actually going to move to Italy. A lot of Americans do not understand the immigration process and they just think because they can afford to live in a place, they should be able to live there. And because they haven't had to apply for an actual visa, like how people from other countries have to apply for visas in the States and sometimes they're denied and they've paid so much money. Um, because uh, Americans have that disconnect, they think they can just move to Italy. And so it is something that is, it needs to be better understood because it's kind of crazy that that's kind of the mentality that Americans have. But anyway, getting a visa in Italy is a con because it's so hard to, and I understand it's hard to get one in the States too. And this goes back to what I just said, like, Americans aren't having that experience of having to apply for visas and stuff. But like in comparison to other countries, European countries, Italy is really, it's not so easy. And I understand it. I totally understand it, but it is a con, <laughs> especially for a person who's gonna move, um, who's gonna move to Italy. Cause it does put you in a, it puts you in a box. And that is the privilege in me. That is the American in me that sees the visa process as a con. But I mean, like even like speaking to people about getting the visas and this kind of ties into several other things. Speaking to people, everyone kind of says something different. When you go to the Questuda and try to get like some type of assistant, the Questuda is like the immigration office and you have a line that is literally wrapped around the building in order to kind of like have them see you like the visa process you can get your appointment for your permesso and you go there whatever whatever it, it, by the time your actual um carta identita i think it's called it by the time that it comes it'll be either already expired or it's going to expire like soon so you have to apply again so because and this goes back to the tradition the bureaucratic process that is just like a hot mess in my opinion it's just like so uncomfortable that they make the process and like a lot of people are like oh that's just italy and it's like but it doesn't have to be this way they don't have to have a line wrapped around the corner they can you know like take the questuda office and move it somewhere um, have a separate office outside of the center and kind of filter people to going into those offices so that there isn't such a long wait. You know what I mean? Like there are ways to kind of like, at least like you have more than enough land in this country. Like you can, you can, you can definitely split up this, split this all up to make it better for the employees and for the people who are coming in this country and we're doing it the legal way. You know what I mean? Like people who are waiting in those lines, they are here and they are legally going through the process. So there's no reason to make it worse than what it has to be. So the visa process, the process of being able to, to be here, it's just like horrible. It's a big, big, big con. Um, the last thing here on the list, of cons is racism and it's something that a lot of people will speak to me about and they're they're wanting to know what and this is how I translate it into two things how unsafe is it and what is the level of discomfort and when I look at the racism in Italy I look at it from the perspective of and it's coming from my perspective. I'm not looking for a job here. I'm not looking for work here. Those are the two, uh, or house here. Those are the, the biggest hurdles that you will have to cross 
as any type of person and that's where you will really see the systematic racism that is dealt um you don't really see a lot of people in managerial-esque um positions and sorry guys i'm sorry I'm itch i just came back i just like literally got to milan went to the grocery shopping and then after this video i'm gonna wash my face off and take a nap which is why my voice sounds like this I've got my sandwich here that's cold that I was supposed to um, was supposed to eat. Um, but one thing you will see is um, with when it comes to the racism, it's typically some type of passive aggressiveness that it makes you feel like you are back in what might have been the 40s or the 50s or pre-civil right movement or during that whole Jim Crow era where white people were being like passive aggressive like you have a you have a balance you have a lot of people who will stare at you which guys by the way is not racist a lot of times they're just curious they'll stare at you but then when you have people who follow you that is a level of racism and i've had that happen and that's where it will like freak me freaking out because i don't like that it's insulting and it's unnecessary because if there's anybody who's going to steal it's not the person who you're following around the store if you are having lost product it's not from the people who you are following around the store you need to be doing a broader viewing of who is coming into the store because there's not a lot of people like me in here and if you have something missing it's not going to come from the person you're following it's going to come from one of the white people who you have walking around and probably putting shit in their bag like it's insulting so like that is something that is it's hurtful and it's frustrating and i'll be honest like it's something that italians really don't think is happening like you almost have to like tell them like this is happening like my partner early on he didn't understand just like people staring at me from curiosity so oh, no no one's staring at you no 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 and i'm like people are staring and it wasn't like it was a bad thing it was just like alarming um, I didn't fall in love with Italy. I didn't love Italy. I fell in love with an Italian. So the experience of me being in Italy, I was not prepared. I didn't know what to expect. I had no um, crash course or no information beforehand of what to expect, like none. So I fell in love with an Italian. So everything that came about was like a shock to me. And... Um, because there is not a large black population here in Italy that is of a, because like even to become a citizen here, it's not that you're just born here. There has to be like some type of a connection lineage. Um, you know, like maybe one of your parents were here and they were here for a while and then they got their Italian citizenship and you got it from there. There has to be something going on like that. So the amount of black people here that are in the system and able to work and in all of that stuff, it's not so many. You might have like, let's say hypothetically, you might have like a hundred black people around and you will have maybe of that a hundred black people, you're maybe going to have 60 of them that are in the system and that can work. And then of those 60, how many are going to get jobs when you have so many people here that are benefiting from nepotism? So, I mean, like not even just from nepotism of like first, like, hey, this is like my daughter. This is my niece. It's like, this is my friend's friend's cousin. Can you help her get a job? Like that's how far the nepotism passes on. So how can you, a person who is from another country, come here and get a leg up in that situation? Um, then you have, uh, like, I'm Black American. You have a lot of people who are here. And this is something that, like, I don't know if I've ever said this, but it's completely different when you have Afro-Italians when you have Africans here who have Italian citizenship, but they are citizens via a spouse. And then you have black Americans here or black foreigners, like black Canadian, black Brazilian, black American, but more or less, I would say like black, black Americans, maybe black Canadians, but more or less black Americans. We have a completely different experience. I wouldn't like, maybe not group Brazilians in with that. But like we have a completely different experience. So like let's say like if you have your African, if you're an African woman and you have an Italian husband, you have a sort of 
you have a connection that will help you benefit with nepotism. I get it. You're smart. I get it. You spoke the language. You learned the language. I get all of those things, but it is still a source of a leg up that has, that helps you. It just is. Uh, and, and I know, uh, you know, people, it wasn't my, whatever. It is a source. He might not have like put in a word for you, but they might see a picture and be like, oh, how are you here? Oh, oh how did you? Oh, my husband's, a, my husband's from, so, oh, wow, wow, wow. That helps. I don't care nobody say that shit helps. Um, and I will say that my level of knowing the kind of, and it's not everyone, but knowing this insight of, you know, how black Americans are treated versus how, um, Afro Italians are treated versus how Africans who have an Italian spouse are treated. It comes from me speaking to Afro Italians who are the people who are able to see, um, in, in this society, they would be more or less not the bottom of the totem pole, but towards the bottom of the totem pole. I'm a person who does not select who is where on the totem pole, but I've had my Afro-Italian friends tell me how they've noticed how black Americans are treated, how black, how Africans who have, who have Italian spouses are treated, how Africans who have come here and they're selling books and jewelry and they have their babies on their back. They are able to see. And then when you also, when you're here and you, 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 you stop thinking about yourself and you look around, you're able to see the difference in how these people and by these people, I'm just saying like white Italians, how they operate and navigate around people of color, different than people of color, how much attention they're giving them, how they dismiss them, how they invite them, how they bring them in. You see the differences in all of that. So it's something that, and I don't care, you can say whatever you're going to say in, down in the, in the comment box. The reality is that you have to speak what the reality is if you want to change. And so um, it is something that I've noticed it's something that I have openly spoken about. If you've heard me do my public speaking, you've heard me speak about it. Um, and then it's also something that like with the racism here, it's subtle. I'll be honest, guys, it is subtle. You don't really experience it on a regular basis. But when you like, I'm, I think I might have had in the last seven years, I think I might have had three or four experiences that I can think of. Or, or three, three experiences, and they've all been within the last four years. I was followed in a store in Puglia in a supermarket. I was followed in a La Essay supermarket here, and I was followed in the Todd's um, outlet store in just not too far from Florence. And that was it. Those were the three times in seven years that I've had the experience. I'm not afraid of the cops. I'm not afraid to be out at night. I, I literally will ride a bicycle the 35 minutes from the center to my house in two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning. No problem. I, I, I don't have any of those issues like I would have in the States. I was like literally out with my friends the other day and they were just like, you have to take a taxi. You have to take a taxi. Like they were like adamant that I took a taxi home. It's never like that level of intensity in Florence. It just isn't. So um, I think that is about it. Um, I want to be as honest as possible. So I really hope that you all enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, don't forget to like it. I appreciate it. If you didn't like it, you can thumbs down it. That's fine too. I'm okay with that. Um, and if you have anything you want to comment about what I've said, comment down below. I will read the comments. I'm not really good at reading the comments. I'm always a little bit nervous if I'm going to be honest, but I will take the time to read the comments. I don't think I'm going to edit this video, but I feel like I need to like edit it. I don't know. Um, I might just upload it, but those are my pros and cons of living in Italy. I will say that I went from being a person that loved an Italian and I was in Italy for an Italian to loving Italy. I have a great group of friends here. I love the food here. I love the atmosphere. I take the pros in, with the cons and I, out, I weigh them and the pros outweigh the cons. And I will be honest, I am a, in a very blessed position because I do make my money in the States, which allows me to enjoy Italy to the fullest. So 
yeah <laughs> so yeah that is just um i mean i i would be i would be lying if i if i ignored that so don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'm gonna make some more videos so please turn on the notification bell and also um follow me on my social media platforms if you enjoyed this and and yeah i feel so weird like i'm keeping looking down i feel so weird to like discuss this stuff um but i think it's something that people need to know and i hope that this helps somebody so exactly 50 minutes yay thanks guys for watching i will see you in the next video ciao